Hey everyone, this video is up late, but not because of work or family or any of my usual excuses. I really only have one reason. I've been playing the Demon's Souls remake for like two weeks straight. I mean, even though I've been playing some other stuff off and on, I end up coming back to Demon's Souls over and over. When I'm not playing Demon's Souls, I've been finishing up Hitman 3, and I've been playing Destiny 2 a little bit, and I've been playing RoboQuest, a new indie roguelite shooter with my son, but mostly, I've just been playing Demon's Souls. I'm finishing up my fourth time through the game, and I feel like I finally know it enough to talk about both the remake as a product, and the game itself. So today, let's take a look at the game that launched the Souls-like genre, and as always, if you like what I have to say, or at least how I sound saying it, subscribe and all that stuff. Demon Souls, after the logo. Part remake, part remaster. Though I came close many times, I can never bring myself to buy a PS3 for just Demon Souls. And I was never able to actually find a working ISO to run the game in an emulator on PC, so when I finally saw the trailer for the Bluepoint remake, I was pretty excited. And then, of course, it became impossible to find a PS5. I refused to spend a thousand dollars or more for a console, but two weeks ago, I found one on eBay for $640. It still pisses me off, but an extra $140 was low enough that I couldn't resist. Hate me if you want. One of the very early videos I made when I started this channel was the Bluepoint remake of Shadow of the Colossus, and one of my only complaints was that, while the game was a gorgeous visual upgrade, many small issues in the actual mechanics were left unchanged. I still feel that the Colossus remake was a chance to improve the original game mechanically, but it's obvious that Bluepoint's view is that the fundamental gameplay systems need to be completely true to the original. That left me a little nervous about the remake because I'd heard Demon's Souls had some jank in it. But I had to balance that against the other thing that made me kind of nervous about the remake. The Souls games all have a very distinctive feel to them. A lot of that comes down to tons of little things that mark a FromSoft Souls game. The way the engine handles movement and physics, the sound design, animations, how the lock-on functions, how the camera moves, and a million other tiny little details. Dark Souls 2 is a great example of a Dark Souls game that just doesn't feel like a Dark Souls game. Even though I've played it for like 300 hours and have come to actually really like it despite all of its terrible flaws, it still feels like playing a game from a different developer to me. Well, Bluepoint did something really impressive with this remake. It feels precisely like playing a FromSoft Souls game but prettier. In fact, this game from a totally different developer feels more like Dark Souls than Dark Souls 2 does. While the textures and designs and particle effects and all that are clearly Bluepoint's original work, the animations, sounds, and game feel is basically a perfect representation of From Software. If someone had given me this game without me having heard of it, I would have assumed it was a From Software game made with a new and prettier engine. From what I've seen of the original Demon's Souls, it seems like many of the animations are basically exactly the same. And as far as the stuff that's new, the Demon's Souls remake is a remarkably gorgeous game, and the PS5 is a pretty impressive freaking console. I can't say enough about how impressive the haptic feedback in the controllers is, and Bluepoint makes really good use of that here in the remake. In the Tower of Latria, you can feel a heartbeat throbbing in the controller. Elevators have clacking chains that vibrate in your hands. It's pretty awesome, man. And of course, the game runs at 60 frames a second without ever slowing down. Load times are fast, and the visuals are just amazing. All of the Souls games, other than Dark Souls 2, are beautiful games, but none of them are as technically solid as this remake is. Lighting is great, and there's none of the weird dithering or bad reflections like you get in From Software's engine. It's basically the quality of From Software's unmatched art design done in a super polished engine. It's the best a Souls game has ever looked. In fact, it's the very best looking Souls-like game in the entire genre. I don't think it's possible for this to have come out any better, just as a pure remake. And playing this really drives home just how disappointing the Dark Souls 1 remaster actually is. 
Bluepoint is obviously a world-class developer, and I'm interested to play the original game they're apparently now working on. Proto Souls. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about Demon Souls as a game. The really interesting thing about Demon Souls is how incredibly similar it is to Dark Souls, while still being such an oddball of a game. Playing this game last, rather than first, really shines a light on how FromSoft has gone about iterating on the design of these titles. I can't find the quote, but years ago I read an interview with William Faulkner where he said that most writers spend their entire careers trying to tell the same story. Every poem, short story, or novel they write is an effort to get that one story that they're interested in perfect. And eventually, when they finally work hard enough and get it right, they're basically done. Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Dark Souls 3 are all pretty much the same game. Not just the combat system and leveling mechanics, but right down to levels, enemies, and bosses. In many ways, Dark Souls 3 is like a super polished, simplified version of Demon Souls. Each of the games has its own unique flavor, but they're far more similar than they are different. And it's interesting to think about what changed and what stayed the same across all three titles. I'm one of the rare people who thought that Dark Souls 3, even though I played it last, is in fact one of the best of the games. Because in most places, it feels like the final version. The Demon Souls remake feels so interesting because it's now simultaneously the most technically and graphically mature game in the series, while also being the most mechanically weird. Each of the Souls games has moved faster than the last, to the point that using a shield in Dark Souls 3 is almost pointless. By the time Sekiro arrived, the games were almost entirely based on Twitch skill and fast reaction times. And I like that. But Demon Souls is the slowest of these games. It's the most overtly unfair at times. But it's also the one that most relies on knowledge of the game and least relies on Twitch skills and reaction times. This can be frustrating at first because it's not a game you can quickly roll through relying on your built-in Souls memory. Probably the best way to say this is that Dark Souls 3 is an action RPG, while Demon Souls is an RPG action game. I'm going to point out most of what I think are the rough edges in Demon Souls in a minute here because I think it's a cool way to look at the more recent games. Almost everything that pisses me off in Demon Souls is something that was changed in the later games, but I have to say, like all the Souls games, even Dark Souls 2, Demon Souls is a great game. The fact that I kept playing through the mountains of bullshit that this game likes to throw at you shows just how amazingly good it is. It's fun to realize just how much of the formula was already fully formed right here. I am so happy this got remade because with a fresh coat of paint, there's nothing to distract from just how interesting the design is and how many insane chances From Software and Miyazaki took making this game. We've come to expect the games to be hard, but Demon's Souls is opaque in ways that none of the other games ended up being and it seems to revel in pissing the player off in spots. I am going to criticize this game some coming up, but let me say up front, I am totally in love with this game. Okay, let's talk about the things that makes Demon's Souls different from the later games. Not user friendly. Are you the kind of player who likes to see everything a game like this has to offer? Well then you're going to have to play at least three times if you go in blind. And unlike the other games, you can fuck up so badly, you kinda need to start over. That's how unforgiving Demon Souls is. Not just because the game can be very difficult if you don't understand what's going on, but also because the game is almost absurdly obtuse in some of its systems. But Demon Souls balances some of that difficulty with items and spells that can trivialize parts of the game. Let's talk about the world tendency system in Demon Souls. For those of you who haven't played the game yet, Demon Souls was the first iteration of a system that all of these games have fiddled with and handled in different ways. How dying affects the player. In Demon Souls, dying in human form immediately lowers your max health by half and prevents you from summoning other players or being invaded. The health penalty in Demon Souls is the most severe of any of the other games. 
Dying means playing the game with half health until you beat another boss or use a resource that's very rare early in the game. Now, there's a ring in the first level that cuts the health penalty to 25%, but then you're given up a valuable ring slot, and in Demon's Souls, the rings are really quite powerful. Indeed, probably the most powerful in the series. If the system stops right there, it would already be the most punishing in the series, but the system does not stop there. You see, every time you die in human form, the game gets more difficult. Dying shifts the world tendency system on a scale from pure white to pure black. And remember, this system is so totally unique, unintuitive, and opaque that you really need to have read about it to have any idea what's going on. My first time through the game, I had no idea how this system worked, and it caused me much irritation. After dying to a boss, I'd just put down my summon sign and a boss door to become human and try again. Because I was doing this in a boss fight, I didn't quite recognize that the boss was getting harder and harder. After my first run, I started New Game Plus, and when I got to the second level, the world was shifted to pure black. This is what that means for the player. Watch. First, pure white world tendency. Now, pure black world tendency. It was the one hit kills, and getting killed literally from chip damage to this level's boss that finally drove me to the internet to read about the system. And it turns out that this system controls quite a lot. Certain NPCs and items only appear in pure white or pure black. In pure black, valuable resources drop more commonly, but you also get blown up by enemies. And more difficult phantom enemies spawn. It's the kind of thing I don't think it's reasonable to expect a player to ever figure out on their own. Or at least not before like five playthroughs, man. It is a crazy system. And the only way to adjust this system is to die in human form or to defeat bosses or NPC phantoms. Killing players who invade you also works, but you would be crazy to try that because remember, you can only be invaded while human and dying while human shifts the world black. So, losing a PvP match means setting your world tendency back. This is a really shitty penalty when you're trying to manipulate the system to get to pure white in each world. So what ends up happening is, players kill themselves in the hub area to prevent it. Which means that you end up having to jump to your death every time you defeat a boss to make sure you don't get killed by an invader and mess up the world tendency if you're trying to get all of the pure white world events to happen. This is one of the most unique and crazy systems I've ever seen in any game. And while it's very interesting, I also think it's too punishing. I'm pretty okay at these games. I've got well over a thousand hours in the series, but for new players, they're naturally going to want to co-op bosses or use the item to become human before fighting a new boss solo because they'll probably need that extra health. But every time they die doing that, they're making the game harder and harder without realizing it. This seems kind of pointlessly frustrating to me. This is probably the only time I will ever say this about a Souls game, but I highly recommend you read about this system beforehand because it's actually hugely important and is completely unexplained in the game. But the trolling of the game goes way beyond that. This is, without doubt, the most frustrating of all the Souls games because it really depends so much on enemy and game knowledge. Nearly every enemy after the first level is some flavor of frustrating the first time you encounter them. This game is just loaded with one-hit kills. Just chock full of them, man. I never level health in these games. Like, in Dark Souls 3, I don't even bother putting points into health. But in Demon Souls, regular mobs will start one-hit killing you fairly soon into the game. Health kind of matters in a way 
It really doesn't in the other titles. These assholes here are just a nightmare until you figure them out. And until you figure them out, you'll find that two of their three attacks one hit kill you when you're not in human form. These guys here are just the worst. And the game puts them on tiny fucking ledges and there are flying manta rays shooting you while you fight them. Red phantoms have grotesque levels of health and one hit kill attacks, meaning it's literally a matter of poking them once and turtling behind a shield because one missed dodge means instant death. The game is obsessed with putting you in the most ridiculous places for fighting. You are constantly fighting in tiny little halls or small little rooms or spiral staircases or narrow ledges. Shit, the mandatory swamp level makes it so you literally cannot roll. And then it throws out enemies who you can't block with a shield. Oh, and also they can sprint through the swamp, but you cannot. But wait, you can find a ring that lets you move normally in the swamp. Oh, but that ring only appears in an out of the way place when you have pure black world tendency. It's insane, man, insane. Now I'm a masochist with these games, so sure enough, I did enjoy eventually figuring out how to handle all of these issues. In fact, surprisingly, I think this might be my favorite game in the series. But you have to know going in that get good isn't actually the answer in Demon Souls. Instead, almost all of these miserable encounters require very specific strategies. You have to switch weapons, use different damage types, try to use spells, use different rings. Remember those annoying as hell manta rays? If you wear a certain ring, they just stop shooting at you, which takes the level from blinding rage to simply difficult. I have always strictly avoided any kind of cheesing in these games. I don't use a bow, except in the rare instances where it's the only option, like the dragon in Dark Souls 3 in the second level, or the zombie dragon in the Valley of the Drakes. I don't really use magic, except after a few playthroughs just to mess around with a different style. I don't use shields in Souls games, except for the parrying buckler or the grass crest shield to get extra stamina. But Demon Souls beat that shit right out of me. Demon Souls, the game, is consistently cheesing you. So by my third playthrough, I felt no compunction about cheesing it right the fuck back. There's a boss that is a great example of this. The Maneaters boss fight is sort of similar to the Gargoyles fights in Dark 1 and 2, except they move faster. And you fight them on a five foot wide bridge. Oh, and they have several attacks that knock you off of the bridge. In my first playthrough, I fought these guys seriously like 15 times. And like 13 of my deaths were to gravity. My second time through, I beat them on the fourth try, but it was still really frustrating getting knocked off the bridge because one of the bosses flew behind me or he dashed straight through the geometry. Going into NG Plus with Black World Tendency, I finally googled them and discovered that you can use the Firestorm spell on them. I would normally never do this in a Souls game, but I gave it a shot and sure enough, I blew them up on the first try. Don't feel bad at all about it. Fuck these guys, man. I fought Flame Lurker like 20 times at Pure Black Tendency in my second playthrough before discovering accidentally that dodging straight into him is actually how you deal with his attacks and that he's weak to magic. This is what I meant when I said Demon's Souls is far more of an RPG than the other titles. And in a way I found that really refreshing though admittedly pretty damn frustrating too. Rough around the edges. Bluepoint's remake is insanely polished. This game is, again, simply beautiful, but they kept all of the original design decisions. And while sometimes these are crazy but interesting, like world and character tendency, sometimes they're just clearly shittier than the later games. Dark Souls 1 has a notoriously ludicrous weapon upgrade system. There are four blacksmiths spread all over the map, and each of those blacksmiths can make different weapon types. And there's a bunch of different materials required. I sincerely doubt there are very many people on Earth who prefer Dark Souls 1's upgrade system to the streamlined Dark Souls 3 system. But Demon Souls makes Dark Souls 1 seem simple and straightforward. Now remember, I don't look things up in my first playthrough, and sometimes not even my second. It was only nearing the end of the game that I started thinking, hmm, 
I never found the person who makes boss weapons. I found two blacksmiths, but I never got the option to make boss weapons or anything other than normal upgrades. Going into the second time through, I googled it. Turns out you need to give the soul from the third boss of the second level to the second blacksmith. Oh, but you can't just have that soul on you and expect him to ask for it. Actually, he doesn't really even mention it. You find this out if you choose the talk option five or six times on a couple of different visits to him. Cool. I ended up just consuming that soul eventually because none of the magic vendors sold anything for it. Then there's the sheer insanity of upgrade materials. There's just a ridiculous number of different upgrade materials. And unlike Dark Souls, these stones are only dropped by very, very specific enemies. Oh, and the world tendency massively affects drop rate. If you want to do the crushing upgrades to make your weapons scale with strength, well, you need to kill these six assholes over and over and over and over until they drop enough chunks. Want to upgrade crescent weapons? This guy right here. Impure Black Tendency. With the item discovery ring, it took me like 40 minutes killing these freaking worms to finally get the four chunks of Greystone I needed. Want the final upgrade material for Crescent upgrades? Well, you need to show a very specific NPC who only spawns in pure white tendency a specific sword. The game is full of this stuff, man. I've said in all my videos about Souls-like games that I hate farming. I don't farm for souls. I don't farm for armor. I don't farm for anything. It's boring. Well, Demon Souls has farming as a heavy component of the gameplay and the upgrade system. And that upgrade system is so insanely opaque and obtuse that it just straight up demands that you Google that shit. How would any player realize that these stupid worms are the only way to ever get Greystone chunks? By the time you're looking for more of them, good luck even remembering that this is where you got one in the first place. And you need a shitload of these chunks to upgrade even one weapon to max. Speaking of farming, Demon Souls requires you to farm for healing. This is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, once you've gotten good, you end up carrying so damn much grass, you need to put it in the bank because the game has a Fallout-style carry weight limit, which is annoying. On the other hand, though, when you're just starting out and you haven't yet fully appreciated that this game is actively trolling you, you'll end up needing to farm for grass. That means going here and killing these two guys like 35 times. Like I said, just understand you will be farming in Demon Souls. Wrapping up. All right, so the PS5 is a pretty damn impressive console, people. 60 FPS on a console is a game changer. For years now, the only games I've actually played on console have been PS exclusives, but with fast load times, 60 frames a second, I might actually end up playing quite a lot of games away from my PC. I bought Hitman 3 on the PS5, for instance. And as far as the first game to play on the PS5, Demon Souls is a gem. I am so glad I never broke down and bought a PS3 for this. If they ever dropped below 200 bucks, I probably would have. But getting to play the game as the most technically proficient, best looking, best performing of all the Souls games is a tremendous treat. I have to say, I'm kind of shocked at how much I ended up loving this game. It's so janky and raw and unintuitive and downright bullshit half the time, and it's just full of farming and ridiculous upgrade requirements and enemies seemingly designed to make you rage quit. But it's also so unique, and its levels range from straight up brilliant at their best to at least above average at their worst. And there's something just really charming about a game that forces you to approach it as much as a puzzle as an action game. You can do what I did in my first playthrough and brute force your way through it. And in fact, now on my fourth time, I have enough of a handle that I can kind of play it like Dark Souls 3 and just dodge roll my way through. But more than any of the other games, Demon's Souls really makes you go slow and pay attention. When you die, it's almost never just a matter of getting better at dodge timing. There's something kind of liberating in needing to actually think through these encounters and find solutions. I figured out the thief ring thing with the manta rays on my own and that felt amazing. It was like lancing a boil. Of course, that section is then followed by an even more bullshit section, but even that just required reevaluating the way I was approaching the game. Whenever someone talks about Dark Souls, they almost always describe the game as hard but fair. And that's absolutely true for most parts of most of the games, but it is not true for Demon's Souls. 
the game is straight up unapologetically unfair. But that's what makes it such a wonderful blend of action and puzzle. This game doesn't test your skill. It tests your willingness to adapt, to improvise, to break the game in your favor because the enemies are constantly breaking the game in their favor. Because it's less of an action game, it's kind of less replayable than Bloodborne, but it's so obtuse that it takes like four playthroughs to finally master what it has to offer. It is both ridiculously unfair and totally brilliant. I actually wouldn't change any of the frustrating unfair bullshit in this game. I think that stuff is core to what makes it different, unique, and quite possibly the best of all of them. And again, this comes from someone who thinks Dark Souls 3 was the best all-around game in the series. But I do wish Bluepoint had taken the initiative to change those few things that aren't core to the gameplay, but are rather just annoying wastes of time. I think an NPC should have been added who at least fucking hints at world tendency. I mean, seriously, just some dude who's like, oh, don't die in human form too many times, friend. Something, I don't know, something like that, man. I ended up not playing New Game Plus on my first character because I gave up thinking that New Game Plus and Demon Souls meant that every single enemy could one hit kill you. It was only going online that I discovered, actually, it's just that I was in pure black in two worlds. And I don't think anything at all would have been made worse by making it totally and easily clear how to unlock boss weapons at the Blacksmith Ed without having to go to Fextra Life and find out I needed to talk to him five times. And I think you could have easily streamlined the upgrade materials and the game would have been better for it. But overall, I cannot recommend this enough. I don't even slightly regret buying a PS5 for just this game, even though I'll have to wait a long time before there's another decent PS5 exclusive. All right, I probably will do another Destiny 2 video next, and then Hitman 3, and I need to talk to y'all about GTFO. All right, thanks for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye.